Hi guys, Mark from Threshold Media, bringing you another C4D tutorial today, this time covering the fracture object within MoGraph in C4D. It's a fairly simple thing to use, uh, hopefully will produce something like this. Now, in this I've used the smart image based lighting which you'll find a tutorial for on the website by Rob Redman. Um, this whole background here is from that image based lighting download. I uh, highly recommend you download it, it is free and Rob's tutorial uh, covers it to, in much more detail than I'm going to do here today. What we're going to be concentrating on is making this sphere um, react when this sphere comes near it like so you see all the uh, polygons here are reacting to that sphere going through and then out the other side just like that okay I'm not gonna as I say I'm not gonna cover the rendering of this you can render it however you like it's simply a, a technique tutorial that I'm going to show you today so let's go into C4D now first thing we're going to need is a sphere and I'd suggest leave your segments at around about 25 make that editable go to polygon mode and select all your polygons there. Go to functions, disconnect, I'm sorry, functions, explode segments, and then functions, disconnect, and untick preserve groups. And you should have something like this happen. So, what that's done is just all the polygons is it's basically disconnected them and it's exploded them out so they're now all individual the next thing we need to do is to go to your MoGraph menu and select fracture object grab your sphere and put it into that fracture object and you should have something that looks like this go into your fracture object and in the object tab select explode segments and what we also now need is in MoGraph a shader effector you can see it's already having an effect make sure in your fracture object the shader effector is in there which it is um, we don't want it to affect the scale but we do want it to affect the rotation, uh, sorry, the position and rotation. And for these, I would select 20 and 20 and 20 across the board, nine, whoops, and then 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And that has this weird effect. You see, all the polygons are separate, and the shader effector has caused this to happen. Excellent now what do we do now well I'll tell you what we need to do what we need to do is to create a material for our specifically our fracture object so double click on your materials tab to create a new material um, uncheck specular makes no difference and in your color tab click on this arrow here go down to effect and proximal into your proximal icon so click on here I've jumped ahead of myself just slightly um, we need something to react to this now it can be anything it could be a, a, a shape sorry a, a, a slug sphere what we're going to do or an emitter particles anything like that but to keep it as per my example we're going to use a sphere 
So bring out another sphere and just shrink it down slightly. Zoom out a bit. Bring it out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to animate it from here to the other side, just, just to show you how it works. So key frame your sphere here, drag your timeline to the end, drag it through, make sure in your top view is actually going through and keyframe it there. So during our animation the sphere will go from there to there and hopefully have an effect on our polygons. Right, back to our material. In our proximal menu you see this box here for objects. Now this is where you would put your emitter or in our case our sphere. So drag that in So what this is doing, this is saying, when this sphere comes near this texture, have an effect on, on whatever that texture is applied to, and in our case, our fracture object. So grab your fracture, uh, your, sorry, your material, and place it on your fracture object, like so. One thing we need to do um, before we do anything else is to come into our shader effector and in the shading tag you, uh, tab you'll see it's currently set to custom shader what you need to do is to basically we need to bring this back to a whole um, a whole shape otherwise it just looks daft if you render it out like I can't see anything now let's put an array in shall we uh, the light where are they here Array lights, oops, bring that down because it's going to be too bright, 50%. Yeah. Okay, the reason we're not getting in, not seeing anything here is because the shader effector is not working yet, but yeah. I digress. In your shading tag, you need to change this to color and grab this proximal shading material that we've made and grab that and put that in your texture tag. And you see that that now makes this sphere whole again. Okay, let's give you this array. Now let's put a skylight in. No. Nope. There. There we go, it's a bit better. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you uh, a part of Rob Redman's uh, tutorial using the smart image based lighting. I'll just show you what I did. Go to Rob's tutorial, he'll cover how all this works. I'm just going to select this preset, apply preset, and what that does, it brings in all the textures and the background. So hopefully now, here we go, we can actually see, see our objects. I'm just going to make a quick material for our sphere, just to give it some colour. Um, let's make it completely different, make it blue. Reflections, for now, you guys know how to do this, I don't need to cover this. And add that to our sphere, not the fracture object. So hopefully now, there we go. Right. We're there. Um, yes, so we have our proximal texture tag in our shading effector. Now, and this sphere hopefully should react with our other, with this bigger sphere by breaking the polygons up as it goes near to it. And there you go. Zoom in a bit closer. And you can see as it goes through the polygons are breaking. Let's just change these settings so you might be able to see it a bit better. There you go, it's better. So yeah, we have our little sphere coming along and the polygons are breaking up. A 
as the sphere comes near it. And as you can see, this smart image based loader is really good because you, you get 360 renderings with this and the reflections and everything else. It's, it's really good. I highly recommend you watch Rob's tutorial on it. So there you go, it's a really simple technique. What I will also show you is how I got the lighting effect. I've shown you this before but I will just cover it again. What I did was put my fracture object into a hypernerbs and as you can see that rounds these polygons out and creates gaps which is how I created my effect. So what I then did was to grab a light make sure it's right in the center which it is and then in my light settings just changed it to a completely different color so a bright yellow shadow maps are soft and then volumetric lighting so then what you then get is it just let it render out Is all these weird and wonderful streaks coming out and, and because it's blue it's reflecting off the blue of the material and creating that green glow which is quite cool so there you have it um, fairly simple technique but quite quite cool for different sort of effects that you might want to might want to have so essentially what you've got just to run over it very quickly you have a sphere or any other object and you've applied it made it editable applied it to a fracture object um, you've then used a shader effector together with a um, proximal shader tag and you've applied the relevant object which you're going to make things move with into this objects tab which in our case is our little sphere and all you then have to do is animate your little sphere near to whatever object that has the proximal material on it and it makes the polygons move and then hopefully you can produce something like this I hope you found it of use today, um, a very quick tutorial, uh, something I had quite a lot of fun doing, and uh, send me your results. Speak to you soon, bye.